the match set ready to go is going to be Boris and Rusty. And uh, what was it? Rusty won the trip from Bullshitter Europe to come on over and compete. <coughs> so uh, pretty cool. I'm going to hand off the mics to uh, our awesome uh, DJs here, DJ <laughs> and Gordon, uh, the stream team. The rest stream team. The stream team. The I rest like of the rest of us uh, are going to keep the bull the bullpen fed uh, with as many matches as possible. Excited to uh, to get this bull shooter underway. Well, I guess it's underway. Yeah, it's been underway. We weren't here. We just want to jump in in the middle. Yeah, streaming is starting now though. Um. So. I'm guessing there's probably a lot of people unfamiliar with Rusty Jake if they don't follow Steel Tip at all. Mm -hmm. But recently, uh, you said he qualified in the Bullshitter Europe. The final of the singles, the, the last cricket leg, was kind of going viral there for a bit. Um, one of the dumbest I was legs of cricket <laughs> I'm I've ever so seen. I'm so glad you <laughs> qualified it that way. <laughs> one of the <laughs> best legs of cricket I've ever seen. As he was playing Barry Van Peer, a, uh, I think he's Dutch, right? Van? Yep. He's got to be. Yep. Um, but uh, a, a Dutch player in the final. And Rusty actually goes, what was it? Trip 20, trip 19, trip 18. Or, yeah. And then uh, Barry goes trip 17, trip 20, trip 19. Which, right there, whatever. Um, and then Rusty decides to take the other three numbers away. Yep. Barry follows, taking three numbers away. Yep. And then Rusty missed the three balls to leave Barry come up and hit the three balls for the win. And I want to say he went double bull, miss, miss. Miss, double bull, miss. That's what it was. Yep. That's what it was. Yep. Oh, they're corking already. So, uh, yeah, they were on it. Well, these are, uh, well, at least Rusty Jake. Well, I, yeah, Boris was there for a while. Messing around here. And Rusty's a pretty young fella. I think he's only about 19. Now, the uh, you're probably familiar, if you do follow Still Tip at all, with his older brother as well, Ralby John, mm -hmm. who has represented Austria in the PDC World Cup and, you know, done quite a few other things. But, uh, but yeah, Rusty, the, the young one of the family, and I've, I've heard him say that he, uh, he might be the best. And we are aware that we don't have board sounds. So we do apologize for that. We'll, we'll get it worked out. Yeah, they. Uh, I, I believe that's where they went to <clears throat> take a look at. I don't know how quickly or how easy of a fix uh, that is. But yeah, I feel like, I mean, I've heard so many people say that about younger brothers or... Younger siblings. I, I mean, time will tell. I mean, obviously he's as qualified, I'd say, um, or at least to have the uh, um, the stroke for it. Well, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. Is I, I do think it's a little bit of an advantage the earlier you get to start. So, with the older brothers already playing, the younger brother starts at an earlier age before those muscles are fully developed, and he can kind of get good muscle memory. Well, like I said, I, I mean, I just, I look back at it, and I mean, we we talked with uh, um, who's manager in, in uh, at the PDC event? Gurney. Yeah, we talked, and he's saying, oh, there, there's this person, this person, so much better than than uh, than Gurney. Well, no, I it's don't like, think we, we've what ever kinda, heard him say that someone's better than Gurney, but he's saying they're like more talented at an earlier age. But I don't know what that means. Um, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. Well, I mean, to be fair, one of the guys that he always mentions just won the latest PDC World Players Championship, Harry Ward. Okay. So, I mean, they're coming along. And the, the one kid, Nathan Rafter, I think finished like top eight. Like, right. It, like, he's not going to tell you that. And at, we probably should. Uh, Boris winning the first leg with a 6-6. Six, six, really no chance for, for Rusty there. Um, but, yeah, I mean. He's not going to tell you that uh, that any of his players are better than Gurney. Is Rusty opens up with a 180. Yeah, big start there. Trying to uh, take advantage of his uh, his turn at the start. No, not in our headphones, anyways. 
And uh, I also saw uh, somebody. Um, we we are in uh, in stereo, so you're getting uh, you're getting DJ in one one ear and uh, Gordon in the other. That uh, that is the way it's set up. All right, real quick, uh, just give us a check. Um, because we, we did just start, um, as far as sound goes, are you guys getting board sounds and how do we sound? Rusty finding a trouble with a second dart to give himself a point where he can take away the 19. Yeah, playing a little bit of a, well, he's facing off against the seven here, so. Boris doing what Boris does with a big nine mark there. <coughs> so already putting uh, young Rusty Jake up to it. Throw so hard. Like the body movement, I don't like, but I mean that's about a crisp of a hard follow through that you're gonna get. Yeah. Makes me wonder how long that elbow is gonna last. Well, I got a feeling that Boris is probably going to be playing on our feet a good bit this weekend. And it might be a bad thing because he's so tall that his head blocks our camera. <laughs> did you see that? I didn't. So it's looking like uh, it's going to be 2-0 Boris real quick. Yeah, I had an opportunity to, to score on the 15s there. It takes the bull. So maybe looking for a 1-1. Final hurrah. Boris quickly shuts her on down and takes that second leg. <laughs> Devlin giving us some updates. We will, uh, as soon as our uh, tech guy will get back here, we will uh, see what we can do about all those things. see the the young player a little little defeated here going down 2-0 quickly well and after starting with a 180 the last leg opts to go for the white horse this time yep so it uh it certainly made him kind of change on the fly because i do agree with the 180 start as the, the better option there. but uh he may he may be thinking that boris is playing so well he has to shorten the legs yeah, which I I don't know that uh, <laughs> that you can disagree. I mean, Boris has been at seven or above pretty much the entire time. We're definitely getting treated to a really good match right off the rip. Why did Boris hit a double twenty? I think Boris asked Boris why he hit a double twenty. You think he saw the mark on the nineteen? Yep. And thought he needed two twenty. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> oh, Boris. Rusty Jake doing a good job here of well, uh, keeping the big man at, his, at arm's length. Well, and especially after that shot where Boris is kind of beating himself up. Yep. That That's really going to hammer that it home. Gives him a little <laughs> right in that 20. <laughs> Boris responded nicely, though, as he puts in 916. <sighs> Ooh, might have needed that one. Yeah, but still up two numbers, so of course can't uh, can't do the whole business here. No, but another nine doesn't even need a nine. Can gonna take, take the the seven? Away. Yeah. I don't know. Down and score. I uh, I don't I don't think I'd have left that for for old Rusty, but. I, th I mean, is 2-0 playing a, a part in that, though? Probably. He does have a leg to give, for sure. Yep. In a leg that he... Uh, I mean, we always say if you don't go first, you pro you shouldn't win it. I mean, that's obviously with a huge grain of salt, but... When you throw a 7-2-5 going second, you can win it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, make that a 7-6. Yeah, I'm going to 7-6. What's that do for you? This really is a great start to a day of what should be one of the more exciting events, singles cricket. Wow, Rusty Jake. Surprised he didn't go straight at that uh at the fifteen up a up a point. 
would have left a pretty big shot for uh, for Boris to <coughs> polish him out. Well, that time he hits the double he needed. So, shot back at him. Still a game shot for Rusty, though. He's going to need two double goals. Three, so Boris able to uh, clean it up here with a 7 3 3. Only needing three bullseyes to uh, clean this leg up for the match. I oh, rushed that one, and there it is. So, you're winner in this one, Boris Kirchmark. And this is single elimination. So, unfortunately for Rusty Jake, it is three and see ya. Yeah, curtains uh, for the for the young Australian. <coughs> Now I saw. Did he? Did he look up? <laughs> it almost looked like he looked up and like wrinkled his he, face. He did. Like I don't know if it was at the averages or the way he played in general or what. But to be fair, he didn't play poorly. No. Like, what is it? Like, yeah. Boris played really well. Yeah, that was. Uh, oof. Well, just goes to show you, kids. Uh, double twenty in uh, the middle of a leg of cricket can go a long way. Oh yeah, when you need three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you throw your opponent off. You yeah, yeah, off. yeah. That's that's exactly what uh, <laughs> what happened. Uh, Who's ready for some darts? Me, me, me. I am, I am. Looks like the players are almost warmed up. We're we're coming, Billy. We're coming. Don't don't you fret. We we have to mute our mics between matches. Otherwise, we get in trouble. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So, oh, I see some reaching of pockets of for a coin to flip. Oh, look. I like it. Flipping the skull can? Uh, I think it was a pack of cigarettes. Oh, fair play. I think it was Benny's cigarettes. He wasn't too happy that dude <laughs> threw his <laughs> cigarettes that way. <laughs> As he scoops them up off the floor. Oh, gamesmanship early on. I like it. <laughs> like, I'll just throw these on the floor, sir. Hey, your $10 pack of cigarettes? Wham! <laughs> oh, I think we have a, a diddle can that I can zoom in on that baby. Don't Google that. So, Brian was just outside, Benny just inside, so Benny will have the start. Once again, this is the Top Gun Pro, Pro AA singles, all cricket, best three out of five, single elimination. This is round two, uh, so both of these players have already won a match. And Benny leads us out. Now, and I'm not driving home or beating a dead horse or anything here. Um, but this will be a much slower pace match than we saw the last time. Yep. And I think that's just a testament to how quickly Rusty and Boris were playing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they they weren't messing around. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any uh, any dart fans out there that uh, yeah that don't understand that just by definition. They're not playing, so this isn't going to be as fast. Especially Rusty. I mean, he was, he was super rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Brian steps off to the side, tries to find the 19. Yeah, but even with the, the moving to the side, I don't know if he had a good enough angle. Like, it's, it's one of those things. I, I'm not afraid to switch to the 18 there. Like, after going single with the first dart, like, I would almost rather sacrifice that single and put in two triple 18s than to stay there and get two singles. But being unable to punish as he only puts in two marks. If that was a miss, or if maybe Brian tried to step over a bit, or maybe now he is switching away from the the 19 because he's blocked. 
But no, it doesn't seem like it. Nope. Managing to find a triple with his third dart. Been a while since, uh, well, I guess not that long. Uh, Benny was just in the, uh, another match on, uh, online. Yeah, we seen Benny play not too long ago. Um, but, uh, before that, I mean, it had been a while since I can recall seeing Benny play, uh, any at all. And I know he still plays, but just so at what, I guess, how much. Right. How much he's out there, uh, but the soft tip community in the Chicago area is definitely thriving. So I don't know how much uh, league or how well, you many know tournaments. He's in Chicago, right? Oh, where's he at? He's in Wisconsin. Oh, because he's always played with. Uh, um, yeah, I yeah. think I think Janesville is. Uh, that's right. That's the that's the name. He's close enough to Chicago. I mean, I know he's probably, you know, hour and a half ish away. Both players not afraid to analyze the uh, the dartboard here. Oh, Brian had an opportunity there after the uh, the first dart. to increase his lead. Brian lining up the 18s. Down quite a bit. Still going to need couple more triples <laughs> only finds a, a last star triple for seven marks but still trolls by six but that's probably enough to uh, force Benny's hand on the 20 I think without that triple Benny would have shut down the 18 first start instead he's gonna go with the 20 yeah, we say it a lot, but uh, cricket is a transfer of pressure. <laughs> Trying to uh, to bend your opponent to your will. <laughs> Not familiar with uh, with Brian at all. I don't know if the chat can help us out. Uh, anybody familiar with uh, with him can let us know where he's at <coughs> or the where he's from. These two certainly seem familiar with each other, so I'd imagine he's not too far away from, from where Benny's at. So Benny got a comfortable enough lead now. He's going to look to shut down some numbers. Nice triple 15 there to uh, ensure that he has a three dart finish when he comes back. If Brian isn't able to load up the 16s. Oh, there you go. Brian lets us know from Janesville as well. Okay. So, yeah, they're probably very familiar with each other. Which we kind of have to assume may be a uh, tough match for Brian. Because with these two having uh, a bit of a history, and then Benny being the player that he is, you can only imagine that, uh, that he's probably beaten Brian a time or two. Yes. And that, that may be wearing on, uh, on Brian for, for this. Uh, Benny was uh, exit stage left there. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. They play on the same team. Yeah. So, I think what we can gather from that is uh, Benny's probably never beaten Brian ever. Yeah. Because they've actually never faced off. There you go. <laughs> One more bull for game one. And there it is. So Benny takes leg number one. And Brian will be leading us out in leg two. To be fair, a uh, pretty poor leg by, by both of their standards, I would assume. Again, not too familiar with Brian, but to be in the, uh, the top gun bracket here, we know he's... A, at least playing up to that level, he's comfortable enough. And I don't want to take anything away from him. It's just an unfamiliarity. But, um, but yeah, I would imagine. I think he had like a 4-0. He's probably much better than that. So maybe the two players will settle in and, uh, and play better this time. There we see a bit of a slow start from Brian and the, uh, the frustration on his face. Pretty straightforward shot here for uh, for Benny. Solid pile of 19s. To take a 37-point lead, force Brian to go back at the 20s. Appreciate everybody tuning in here on uh, Facebook. This is the only place to get this stream. We do not have uh, anything going out on uh, on YouTube. So tag your friends, like and share. Yeah, we're trying to break records this uh, this weekend. So uh, if you guys make that happen, there may be a special prize at the end. now starting to get behind well that'll help eight point lead looking at the 19 oh somebody else saying brian is from fort atkinson okay Lori, you're gonna have to tell us where fort atkinson is She's splitting hairs. Is Janesville big enough to have suburbs? <laughs> like, I'm not even trying to be rude. Like, are there suburbs of Janesville? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why I'm acting like I know where Janesville is. Like, if someone said you were from Crestline instead of Galleon, how would that make you feel? Close enough. Yeah, this close enough. I mean, I, or would you like not nah, from? Crestline. It depends on who was saying that to me. Like, if it was someone from Bucyrus trying to tell me I'm from Crestline. <laughs> oh no! I love this joke. No, it means nothing. No, it really doesn't. To ninety nine percent of our people. <laughs> you you want to talk about other small towns in uh, the middle of nowhere, Ohio? Right by Jamesville. Okay. <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, I, uh, they're, they're a pretty good distance away. So if he's they're from saying Fort 30 minutes, yeah, they're saying 30 minutes away. Okay. So it'd be like saying you're from Mount Gilead if we're keeping this going. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just, just for everyone's not reference. <laughs> <laughs> I know when to stop beating this horse. <laughs> All right, looks like uh, Benny off to uh, a, a better uh, better leg here as we are uh, brought some refreshments. So 
Penny up in his game. Brian dipping, uh, dipping a bit, which spells a spells trouble for him. So Benny now up by 69 points, shuts down the 17, looking at the 15, takes it to round out the corner is the 16. Oh, just missing. But this leg like, much more to the uh, the standard that we expect Benny to be playing at or above with a 5-3-3, putting almost a full mark on his average from the first game. And making it look uh, making it look easy. Brian looking kind of defeated, to be honest. Yeah, you start. I mean, even after that uh, that opening shot, he uh, the shoulders start to sag a little bit, pacing. Benny putting in uh, twenty one points on the seven. What's going to be really funny is when we see these two playing together later in the weekend. Where you can only have like one pro double A player, one pro player. Somebody got it. <laughs> There's a triple. Another to take the lead. And there it is. So an 11 point advantage for Brian. Good shot. Not giving up in this one. No, it does a good job to stick in there. <clears throat> Sometimes all you need are uh, three big ones. That's what Benny does to uh, have a lead headed into the bullseyes here. Yeah, last couple shots haven't been the greatest, but... They've been effective. It's Brian in a tough spot needing to make a comeback here on the uh on the bullseye. You see another shake of the head as he retrieves those two bullseyes. Two bullseyes what Benny needing now to take a two oh advantage. Brian's not done here, though. I mean, he, he's going to have to win three on the spin. But he's only going to have to break throw once if he can win the cork in the fifth if we get there. Because they do recork. So hold your throw here, gain a bit of momentum. And then the fourth leg will be the tough one. But you got to get the third first. Big open there from Benny. Putting in a pile and a half of 19s. Closing and scoring 114 points. So right away, putting the pressure on Brian. Yeah, Brian uh, really wants to follow. Because these legs can get away from you uh, very quickly. On this 15-inch uh, board. Oh, and only three after a first dart triple. So another big shot here out of Benny, and it's going to completely deflate Brian. 
Yeah, this, I mean, very rarely can you win a, uh, a cricket leg in six starts. But, uh, oh. May only take five. Five perfect to, uh, to start this leg. To put, uh, to put Brian so, f so far under the gun. Yeah, given Brian's demeanor and the way he's playing, I, uh, I don't see a way back now. But, I mean, as he's proven me wrong, putting in a triple, you just slide right over top of both of those darts. Oh, he does. Just too high. Well, again, welcome to everybody. We are at uh, the Bull Shooter 34 Worlds. Memorial Day weekend. We are into day two. We already had uh, one uh, evening's worth of uh, darts last night. Yeah, the four-man event. Well, four-person, because they had the ladies as well. The four-person events. We were... Uh, we were part of every one of them except for, or every one of the regionals except for, uh, what, South Carolina? Yeah, and that was mostly due to the unfortunate circumstances of the, uh, the hurricane hitting there. They, uh, they weren't really, they were trying to be considerate to the local area of, um, the, with the Wi-Fi and, and all of that. So, yeah, I think that's the only one we, uh, we missed this year. Oh, yep. Wisconsin. Ah. We did not do Wisconsin. So 12 stops. The dads were at 10 of them. The sweet melodies of our voice. <laughs> the smooth, silky baritone. And yes, uh, as Chris Long mentions in the chat there, we will be having our uh, international event come Sunday, I believe. Um... So yeah, the, uh, as you can see the the flags in the background there over top of Benny's head. There, uh, I don't believe there's that many countries represented this year, but there have been um, each of those countries represented in the past, I believe. So uh, yeah, many many countries. Obviously, the U.S. and Canada almost always uh, stalwarts in the event, but um, but yeah, I want to say they've had. You know, Japanese teams. I uh, know they normally have a Dutch team. Um, I believe the Germans are always yeah. big coming over. Yeah, so uh, be sure to tune in then and, uh, and watch. It's Brian down now. 104 points. an opportunity to try to tee off on the 16s. Getting really frustrated now as he moves about two feet to the left and lands to the right. It's the old bowling technique. So then you're going to take away that 16. Triple 15 now for the win. Still a triple 15 now for the win. And there it is. So your champion in this one, Battle of the League partners, Benny Dersh, knocking out Brian Buntrock. So, uh, do we have another match there, Augustine? Looks like we're going to be getting Eric Gregory and Paul Schwindelman. You talk about Battle of Friendly yeah. Foes. <laughs> How about that? So yeah, we uh we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, these two are getting ready to do battle. As we see uh P Schwindeman here getting us started in leg 1. Mr. My name's too long to fit in the scoreboard. So we said, friendly foes, these two definitely know each other well, both from the uh, St. Louis area, and both of them taking it easy on the old Palski. One more Amish than the other? Are they? 
I don't know that either one's more Amish than the other. <laughs> I, I feel like these are brothers in Amish as well. <laughs> I think they use the same beard guard. <laughs> 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 Paul uses a little bit more just for men. That's true. That's true. Both players not messing around though. I like uh like the play pace. Oh the pace is definitely there. Well Paul always plays quick. And Eric's not necessarily a slow one. He's just a little slow on approach. Sometimes. You can see both players finding the uh, funny side of averaging 2-3 and 3-3. Three, three. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not... Well, Ox is here, right? I think it... I think Ox and Gregory are probably playing together. I was getting ready to say I wouldn't be surprised if these two are playing together, but I know uh, Ox and Gregory uh, have played together for so long. I think it's kind of like you and I. If, if both of them are going to be at a tournament together, they're playing together. And I think right. Paul understands that. So it'll be interesting to see who, uh, who Paul's playing with this weekend, if that is the case. Looks like Eric's the one that's starting to find triples first. He's brought the average up to a 4 -0. Yeah, Paul just kind of going through the motions here at the end of this uh, this first leg. Knows he's going to start the next one. Game two. Got Uncle Bill joining us in the uh, shark. <laughs> in the, in the uh, I almost said the conference room. On our che conference call. Cheers to cheers to Friday. And for those of you wondering, that uh, the lovely black floor with the arachnid and the the bull shooter emblem uh, there, that is new this year. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but. That is flex court flooring. Somebody seems to be yelling. Oh, I think they're saying that it uh, it's loser starts. I think Eric was getting ready to start thinking it was alternating, but it is indeed loser starts. At least that's the way I've seen it the whole time. Yep. But uh, but yes, that is. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Flex, flex court flooring. So yeah, the uh, the sport court um. I guess makers, manufacturers. I've got a, I got a whole little thing oh, here. Oh well, give me your spiel, Dad. Flex Court is a global leader in high performance module sports surfaces. Flex Court is one of the first to bring this type of high quality sport enhancing floor to market. Today, they continue our reign on and off the courts with innovative flooring. I don't even know that that is a word. Opie ions? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's exactly what it is. Uh, custom de designs, DIY, or professional installations, little to no maintenance, and the most competitive sport performance to price ratio out there. Probably should have read this before I tried to read it. Probably. <coughs> Way to be prepared. But the Flexport.com. Check the, them out. The moral of the story is if you like what you see and you're looking at getting some sort of sport court, be it... Basketball, tennis, I think they can even convert it into, like, ice hockey for those of you that are in Minnesota. Uh, yeah, feel free to uh, to check that out, flexcourt.com. Uh, As we see, a much uh, different leg this time around. Is, uh, Eric struggling early on, but Paul seeming to uh, find the triples early. Did do enough to get the point lead, though. Effective shot. 
out there. Yeah, both players. I mean, it's it's tough in this situation where you're uh, when you're playing a buddy, especially uh, relatively early on, single elimination. So you know. Uh, That's probably the toughest part. Is the fact it. that you know it's single elimination. Like you're effectively ending <laughs> someone's night. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, hey, you threw enough darts today. <laughs> you go get dinner. Well, I guess it's not true. There's a seven o'clock event too, but still. That's true. Well, you take a break. Because I know you and I, you, um, like you're not much of a bracket watcher, and I always was. Mm-hmm. Or I always am. Yeah, I was just gonna um, say, is that change? But uh, but I know you would be curious enough to ask me if we can meet in the finals. Like if I was to check the bracket out, like while you didn't really care to watch the bracket, you would at least look at me like, can we make the finals? Like, right. All right, cool. Because that, that that's what we're playing for. Like we want to see each other in the finals, and I'm sure these two are the same way. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure when the bracket came out, I I, I actually. Don't. Is that a soft tip thing? The the bracket watching. Just because nine times out of ten, because it's double elimination, there's a lot more attention paid See, to I a mean, bracket. I'll be honest, I pay less attention when it's double elimination because there's too much. There, there's more to figure out. Like I don't, I don't really care at that point. Just stay in the winners. Like I'll, I'll probably watch the winner side. Right. But I'm not watching the bracket to see like, oh, if I lose, I'll be playing here or anything like that. Like, I, I almost treat it like an individual bracket, depending upon which bracket I'm in. Like, if I stay in the winner's side, I'm only looking at the winners. If I move to the losers, I'm only looking at the losers. Right. No, because I was just going to say, I don't know <clears throat> I don't know either of these guys' status as far as that's concerned. Now, I will say that uh, um, the, um, what was it, the Nebraska um, Regional is where I saw uh, Paul. And uh, and he was hanging by out by the uh, the bracket pretty much the entire time, but I think that was a that was a timing thing. Well, and I was getting ready to say I think it, uh, a big part of that is for timing because as we noticed, this match got called and these two were right to the board. Yep. Like that, I think that goes along with being a bracket watcher as well. The people that don't like to hold up the bracket tend to watch the bracket so that they know when they're up. I think that was just you giving a sales pitch for being a bracket watcher. And the fact that these two showed up immediately when they got called. <laughs> well, we can see both of these guys starting to find the game that we uh, that we kind of expected from the beginning. Yeah, and the, the smiles and the laughs and stuff have kind of went away. Yep. They're starting to settle in and play a real darts match. I think the uh, the friendship has been brushed aside at this point. Surprised to see Eric switch there for the first dart. Even if he were to go trip 19, trip 20, I don't know that it puts him in a good enough spot. To be worth it. Yeah. Paul punishing as he trips the 15 with the third dart. Bit gutsy. Yeah, if I'm Eric here, I might try to close out. Yeah, had he closed the three numbers, he could have made it three bulls to four. But he does manage to double bull with his last dart, taking the point lead by one point. So if you're Paul, do you just load it up? Now I like that shot. You take the first one at the bull, you've got three chances to miss the, the bullseye and score, which would allow you to stay on the bullseye with the next two. Eric, not giving up on those bullseyes, though. Five? Eight, five bulls. Oh, great shot. Forcing Paul to have to hit four 20s before he takes a look at the bull. And he's not going to do it as he misses the first one entirely. Now he needs a triple just to get the lead. And he doesn't do it. So Eric with a chance to hucklebuck the leg. And this is all because of the way he's hit bullseyes. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great opening oh. shot. Oh, and he doesn't find the single. Brutal. And now he's missing the bull after crushing him the last two turns. So he st still has a lead, but really needs to extend it to deny any blanks. 
So Paul only going to need two singles now to get a shot at that bullseye. Paul not going to mess around after giving the, uh, the shot back. Paul knotted up at one leg apiece. And now it'll be Eric to start. And I... It's weird. Paul had the lead for, for most of that leg. Even though Eric was kind of playing a little better, Paul was pretty much in control the uh, the whole way. And I think Eric feels like he gave that leg away there because what? he got that game shot. Well, I don't know if he feels like he gave the, 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 the leg away, but he certainly feels like he gave up a big opportunity okay. to extend that sure. leg and maybe get a, a better shot. Maybe maybe the seven mark to win wasn't, wasn't the hill to die on, but... But uh, he was certainly shaking his head. It, I, know, I know that. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, the the blank with a game shot uh, is is not what you want to see for the uh, for the confidence. Especially after missing the first, if he just puts in two more bulls. In just a sales pitch for uh, how we were asking to shoot it, two good shots um, with the close around the board and then five bullseyes would have won him that uh, uh, would have won him that leg. Yeah. And the way he the the shot on the bullseyes, um, while he was off to a great start, uh, really extended it, making shot on shot have to be uh, have to be that level. Big seven mark there from Paul taking a 32 point lead. Good switch, sliding over to find room. Hits another single. Effective, the minimum. Oh, and Paul only puts in three singles, missing low with all three. So Eric now has got to be looking to punish. In his head, he's going to want to get rid of these 17s, as he does with his first dart, and at least one more number. Oh, but he might get rid of all three, just barely missing the 16. So a two number and eight point advantage for Eric. Go twenty. Great shot there from Paul, filling it up. I probably would have been twenty on that last one. Forced my opponent to have to hit a triple because I don't want to lose on the twenty. But it's looking like the right shot from Paul. Is Eric not finding a triple his first two, and seems to be blocked. I think he's no fifteen doesn't even get the point lead, so he had to stay there. Misses in the triple one. Lights so. out. So yeah, Paul making the right choice the last time. <laughs> yeah, we see a one point one lead in the uh in the averages. So he's up forty eight. <coughs> Should go sixteens here because it does push the bull. No. Stayed on the bull. I got a feeling at some point in this turn, Eric's going to look to take away that 16. Yep, there it is. And that's why I think Paul should have went for the uh, for the 16s with that last start last time. It would have increased his point lead by at least 16, you got to think. Yep. Which means it's, it's another bullseye. If he finds a triple, it would have been three more. Nothing hurt. Get him the leg. So I'd say below the standard that we expected in that leg, but uh, but some good back and forth there throughout. Uh, throughout. Ooh, big last start. Able to find a pile. Paul seems to be finding a rhythm. Firing in 9-19. Yeah, start, starting to keep on that pressure uh, to Eric. And you see it there as he misses by a mile. First start. Finds four, but uh, after that nine mark start, this is uh, P. Schwindemann's to, uh, to squander. <coughs> Yeah, an 8-0 through six darts. If he can keep this form up, he'll be a force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. 
really other than that first leg. I mean, he's played pretty darn solid the whole way through. Especially on the 19. Yeah, 19s are free there for a second. Eric's hung on in there, though. To be honest, with your opponent throwing a 7-3-3, you expect to be down down by more than 24 points when you come to the board. And uh, and Eric's done a good job of, of keeping in this one. But it doesn't look like Paul is going to flinch. Another 9 mark for Paul. So now 45 point and 2 number deficit for Eric. He's going to need 2 triple 16s for the point lead. Staying there. Oh, I'm missing high. <laughs> Paul going to take advantage of those free 19s. Eric needs to tee off on the 16. I mean, doesn't get any better than that. Uh, way to stick in there. So great back and forth here. At the end of the fourth leg. Ooh, Paul electing to close down and score there. I, that might be a matter of how well Eric hit the 16s. Yeah, he he was over it. Eric's gonna want to stay. Ooh, you look to level the playing field a bit, take away the 19s. Especially given the way Paul's been hitting them. And there we see him <laughs> right back in there. Well, that's opportunity now for Eric. Three good darts, and he could uh, go into bullseyes with the lead. We saw him squander the last time he had a big shot like this. And we see it again. Not uh, <coughs> not a good sign there from uh, from Eric under the gun uh, on two separate occasions, and uh, just unable to convert anything. But we also seen Eric battle away on bullseye to give himself opportunity. So if he can do that again, there's one. There's three. There's four. So point lead taken. Yeah, I mean, uh, minimum job done. Let's see what Paul's going to do with, uh, with this here. A free 19 and to the bullseye. And there it is. Yeah, great finish to, uh, to that match there from Paul Schwinderman as he takes it 3-1, eliminating his good buddy and Amish brother and... <laughs> Eric Ger Gregory. <laughs> so uh, that will do it for this one. We should be getting another one very shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, we appear to have a good one. The Battle of Texas. Mm. Who will reign supreme in the Lone Star State? Leonard versus Alex. Where's your money at? Where's your head at, Dad? Mm, this is a tough one. Um, I don't know if you can pick this one. Well, of course you can. Like <laughs> with any success? I'm going to say whoever wins the cork. You're going to say whoever wins the cork? All right. <coughs> I will take uh, I'll take whoever doesn't win the cork. For a dollar? For a dollar. All right, deal. <clears throat> I know who I hope wins the cork. Who do you hope wins the cork? <laughs> uh, <coughs> the other guy.
like they're corking now. And it looks like Leonard may have got it. Where you at on the cork cam, Dad? Dad, that was a little slow. Oh, it's a tie. Both players seem to be a hole in. That seems to be one or two better. So Alex going to have to go between those two Leonard darts for the double bull. Clear way in there. Oh. Looks like it's either a tie or Leonard got it. Leonard must have it. All right, so for a dollar, I have Leonard, you have Alex. All right, here we go. We see the uh, the niceties uh, exchanged here. Alex uh, complimenting Leonard on uh, how he looks tonight. <laughs> hey, man, did you shave? <laughs> you look good. <laughs> Leonard loving the compliment. Gives him a little bit of confidence, and he puts in a nine mark. <laughs> Seven mark follow, so uh, already these two uh, hitting the ground running. But this is what we expect at this stage in the game. Everybody in here is uh, obviously playing, playing well. Stiff competition. Single elimination, no second chances, so, uh... Yeah, pretty sure we're down all the way to, uh, the last 16. So, not too many players left in this. We, uh, we should only have good matches from here on out. As everybody left in has won three or four, uh, matches under their belt. And neither of these players seem to be missing much at all. 8-0 played 7-6-7. Yeah, both of these players trying to uh, trying to match the force of uh, of Boris. Well, to be honest, we've been back in the booth. For all we know, Boris might have fallen off a little bit or gotten beat by the seven six seven that these guys are from. That's true too. We don't know that Boris is uh, is still running. We just know that uh, He's the we best got we've seen on the stream. <laughs> we got treated in that uh, in that first match. Yeah, to be honest, I'm trying to think. The only one that's even came close was the latter part of Paul Schwindeman. Yep. Now, these guys are putting up a fight for best on stream. Both averaging a 7.5 through four, excuse me, four rounds. And that's probably going to go up here. No, it goes down. Leonard, Leonard, Leonard. Uh, letting, his, letting his average slip. Sounded like Mario Brothers. Leonard, Leonard, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, big shot there from Alex. I don't really understand the uh, the trip 18. I thought he was going to go trip 17 there to give himself a three dart out when he came back. But I don't really get it, to be honest. Yeah, another big shot there from Leonard. Neither player missing. I mean, going first, averaging a 7.5. You're going to win a lot of legs. Yep. As long as you finish the bullseyes. Well, the bullseyes will kill that average. <laughs> Dropping from a 7.5 to a 6.71. Alex, so far back, though. Finish off this first leg. Alex only with four mark start, so chance early for uh, for Leonard. 
Well, yeah, I and mean, we talk about it all the time in this kind of format where it's loser starts. It's only when you go down two clear legs that it becomes a problem because you're always guaranteed to throw in the next one. But um, Alex, after never really having a poor turn in that first leg to open up with only four marks, that really opened the door for Leonard to break the throw here. Good recovery from Alex as he puts in 718s, but if Leonard continues it triples with the uh, frequency that he's put up so far, I, th I think this is probably going to be a 2 lead. And a dollar in Juju's pocket. <laughs> or at least close for two. It's been a while. We'll, ha we'll have to see the uh, the totals. Yeah, I haven't pulled it up in a while. I know you're up. I think you're up double digits at least. Actually, we'll Most likely. Now. We'll look now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. That's the verdict. Fifteen. Ooh. That's a lot. That's more than I thought it was. <laughs> I need this dollar. Winner. I feel like you you've been more truthful with keeping track of those dollars than oh, if it's a fifteen. Yeah. yeah, if if it means advantage Gordon, <laughs> it's it's more truthful. Well, there for a while, I know it hovered at twelve, and I probably won like seven or eight. No, because it didn't go back and forth. You were just winning all. Yeah, the time. straight through. Yeah, yeah, that happens all the time. <clears throat> to be honest, the only time we ever have any big swings is when we up the bet. <laughs> I know, and I love it. <laughs> dollars that stuff doesn't pay the rent dude <laughs> i'm sorry you're trying to pay your bills with your rent money <laughs> that's almost like being a dart player yeah <laughs> oh is there a blind draw tonight i think hey are you guys going to this draw the more people show up the more money i can make. <laughs> leonard not missing no just dirty sauce yeah above a seven again I mean, the good part for Alex, I mean, he's th he's not going to feel like he's off or, or not playing uh, playing well, but uh, may maybe like playing a wall in tennis because that wall is relentless. So Alex needs at least four bulls just for the point lead. But even that's not going to be enough as he gives up and warms up for the next leg. Hate seeing that, really. We saw what Eric Gregory could do to the bullseye earlier. Yeah. Um, I mean, five bulls there, and he could have potentially got a gift from Leonard and then had a shot at the game. I mean, only down three numbers. But, uh, but it's his game to play. And, uh, and I guess he thinks he's better served warming up for this shot here. We, we do think that the last leg, the, the 420s, is probably what cost him. But it, uh, it didn't do... Well, it did do... Okay, he did find a triple at the last. I was getting ready to say it didn't do him a whole lot of good, but managing to find the last two triples. Leonard dialed in, though. Yeah, Leonard just leg on leg, turn on turn, uh, smashing the triples here. <clears throat> and you see, finally, Alex uh, has had enough of this missing stuff. Well, the problem is Leonard hasn't had enough of this hitting stuff. Now, Leonard played extremely well. Perfect. In fact, through six dark. So Leonard way the advantage right now. If he puts in nine again, it's going to be all but over. Oh, Leonard can only go eight in a row. So door open for Alex. Interesting. Alex once again choosing to take away the 18 down and score. And given the way that Leonard is hitting triples, probably ill advised. There's a triple. Oh, but he misses the 17. Well, I mean, Alex.
Alex is going to need seven 16s for the point lead. But if he goes trip, trip, I think the smart try is to take the 15 down and score now. Mm -hmm. Go into the bullseyes needing four if Leonard doesn't finish the game. Right, and just hope that Leonard doesn't. But now he's uh, stuck. Yeah, three's not going to be enough. So Leonard looking to uh, to polish this up. Up by 51 points. He's going to get rid of the bull. Well, he's going to put a double bull in and then close the 16s. So Alex needs six bullseyes for the lead. Otherwise, Leonard will have three clear at one bull. There's four of them, so Leonard, one bullseye to win this match, 3-0 in the Battle of Texas. And there it is. 6-7-5 for Leonard. The crowd not giving enough applause as Leonard just put on an exhibition. Yeah, really uh, really doing doing a lot of work early and then uh, just staying strong throughout uh, throughout each leg. So We talk about it all the time. It's that, it's that pressure. Like... Once you get on your opponent, you have to keep applying the pressure. And Leonard never let up. And it suffocated Alex right out of the match. So uh, that will do it for this one. We should be getting another one shortly. Our man Augustine will be walking in any minute. But don't go away. We'll be right back. All right. Looks like we are into the... Uh, I think this is another top eight match. <coughs> We got uh, Boris, uh, the thriller from the uh, the very first round. Oh, it's set on one player. I think Dave realized it. Yeah, it's set to one player. So Dave will lead us out in a two-player leg of cricket. Eventually. Sometime. Boris, the what? The Croatian sensation. The Croatian sensation. I, does he have a a moniker? I don't know. Not that I know of. What's Dave? The, isn't he like Excalibur? Yep. Basically doesn't have one. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't know the story behind it, but it... I, why? I mean, that's the, that's the sword from the stone. No, no, no. I... I know what Excalibur is. No, 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 but I'm trying to run through, like, oh. facts of oh. Excalibur to be like, yeah. okay, what did you, is there a stone with a dart in it in Canada? Was, it, was it the person named Dave? Like, was the one that removed it? I don't, I don't know. I got nothing. Fill us in. They're at-home viewers. Yeah, anyone in the chat can uh, fill us in on that. That would be uh, greatly appreciated. So Boris not playing the way we saw him earlier. Early doors here. Only a 3.0 through six doors. No, really allowing uh, Dave to settle in, <coughs> which uh, something he did not allow. Um, I heard he. Which which John did we watch early <laughs> earlier? <laughs> Roby no, John. No, no, Rusty Jake. <laughs> Rusty Jake. Which uh, <laughs> which RJ did we see earlier? <laughs> Only three singles for Dave, but pretty effective as he shuts down the 17 and scores 20. Yeah, but Boris, uh, just crazy enough to, uh, to try to come back in this leg. Seven mark from him. Dave does not want to mess around here. His, uh, once Boris catches fire, he can usually, uh, keep it going. And it looks like he's starting to find his range here on this, uh, on this bullpen board. See him back up with another nine. So Boris.
have snapped out of it real quick. Now we're doing a 5-8. But he may have dug too big of a hole to get out of here. He only puts in three 16s. Dave's going to take advantage. Putting in a big seven mark. Six if we're PC. <laughs> Technical. Boris happy though that uh, he didn't uh, shoot at the 15. Allows him to uh, to throw that nine mark. <clears throat> Reels in 90 points. shaky there from Dave because uh, makes this leg a little bit closer than uh, well it means that he has to hit on the first turn he, can't, he doesn't have a turn to give him right, right. whereas if he puts in a solid shot on the left, he would have had a much much easier path to this leg but now if he if he misses the ball he's not going to <laughs> but what if? But what if? So Boris will lead us out in leg number two. And really, other than the six darts to start the leg the last time, Boris has been in the same form we saw him earlier. Right. And in this format and with these uh, these players, that's just, uh, that's enough to do it. And, I mean, never mind the fact that he was going second in that leg. So True. I mean, he was going to be under the gun no matter what. And giving away six darts is basically nine. <coughs> Both players opening up extremely well. Boris the first to flinch. Only putting in five. So big opportunity now for Dave. If he can put in another nine, he could be looking pretty for a break. Ho, 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 ho. Just barely missing that 20. Boys, only five again. I feel like that was always gonna be, um, like the 19 going away. It, it was it, seven was the max there, anyways. Right. So Dave down takes that 20 away. I like that shot a lot. And you make Boris think, and he can't make up his mind. So now you can tee off on the 18. And you've got the bigger number. Playing better. You got the bigger number and you hit more triples. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a surefire way to to do well in cricket events. Uh, Boris playing his normal. Uh, <coughs> cojones to the wall strategy and uh, when you're not hitting it, uh, it, it looks pretty foolish yeah Dave really taking control of this leg and again I mean, we're going to talk about it all weekend with these formats it's only when you go down two legs that it becomes important because now you have been broken. Oh, Dave elected to take the six first. first. Great shot there from Dave. Yeah, Boris gonna look back and uh, wonder what uh, what happened. As he goes down quickly. Puts in six bulldogs and still trails by three. Big, big shot But that's there. a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Especially when you felt like you were going to come back to the board with, uh, with a 
pretty decent shot, and that is incredible. Wow. So Dave only needing three bulls after the six bulls from Boris goes miss, double bull, miss. And Boris is going to go at the 15s first. Not even close. And he doesn't close Not it even down. Close. So Dave is still going to get a chance to win this leg, only needing three marks. Two 15s and a bull. And he's going to get the bull first. I mean, only needs two 15s, but I wouldn't want to make myself have to hit two singles. He didn't know what he was throwing it? Incredible. Stop it. Stop. Did Incredible. Is this real life? That's absolutely real life. Dave didn't even know what he needed. Oh, and Boris is going to... Wow. Barely hit it. Barely hit it. One hole in. I, I'm at a loss for words. I, don't, I know I, we're supposed to be talking right now. Yep. But, uh, but I really can't talk. Like... What just happened? And how does Dave respond? Because he was cruising before that. What happened and what is going to happen because of that shot? I uh, well, I mean, I I don't know. I I, I really I I have no idea what to uh, um what to say. I mean, that's that's a huge turning point for Boris in my mind. Um, oh, there's not only getting the leg, but just to just to know how much that's got to be weighing on your opponent at this point. The only way we aren't talking about this for the rest of the event is if Dave wins this match. Yeah. That's the only way. If Boris wins this match, there's it's all we'll be talking about. That I mean that only rivals uh, the Canadian the the kid that went up to grab his darts, touched his darts in the middle of the match. Um, Sean Narain has Carver beat. Thought yeah, he only needed a that. bull. Still had a dart in his hand and went up and pulled his darts in the middle of a soft hit match. The board's not going off. The board's not doing anything. But once you touch your dart, your turn is complete. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's the level of, of mistake. I tell you, Dave is a trooper. Yeah, he shook it off pretty well. Because I, I don't know that I could continue to throw six marks a turn after that. Now, I don't believe that I would do that, <laughs> but. Oh, that was, uh, wow. I mean, that that that's one of those points in, those mo in the movie where you're not scared. You're, like, embarrassed. So you hide your face. <laughs> but Dave is, I, I tell you, that's it's a testament to Dave here because uh, he's doing amazing to uh, to come back. I mean, Dave is playing even more. He really is. Like, he looks mad. Normally, it takes your opponent doing something to upset you. Dave did it to himself <laughs> to make himself play better. He's like, you know what I need? I need to be mad. Dave, Dave is playing 4D <laughs> cricket. <laughs> Dave is in a fourth dimension right now. Oh. Incredible. I mean, uh, I mean, at the end of this, if if you if you're Boris and you do lose, like you were literally given the only leg. It's hard to argue. I mean, but <laughs> it's not as if Dave hasn't played well. Like, like Boris is just being beaten. Which is such a surprise, given the first match of the day. Like, we watch this guy throw 7-plus pretty much every game. Uh, Dave fires off two stinkers after uh, a good one. I 
I wish no ill will towards Dave whatsoever. No. But at the same time, I'm a little disappointed that he may be let of such a blunder. Because it makes it as if it didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. The guy lost the leg. How much more do you want him to pay for it? Well, it's not that I want the guy crucified right now and, and to be lo like to lose the match. But, like, he simply just... put the sword back in the stone <laughs> for a second. No, and I, I'm not rooting against Dave at all. But I do, I am a little disappointed that now it's going to be a joke more than a, like, did you see what Dave did? Well, uh, now it's going to be like, ah, did you see that leg where I did the thing? All the, all, ah. the, all the signs are pointing to a uh, to a fifth leg. But no, but I think the, I mean, the, the, the paying for it was the loss of loss of the leg and in allowing one all well yeah but if dave doesn't win this match okay that's the moment everyone will point to well sure yeah i mean absolutely if dave wins this match nobody's gonna point to it. yeah it's, it's gonna be a laughing point. it's gonna be a laughing point. sean rain won the match we're talking i was talking about <laughs> I will never forget that in my entire life. <laughs> All right. Well, you. <laughs> You're a little more cold-blooded than the rest of us, I guess. Because at the end of the day, it only hurts if you lose the match. But it does look like we're going to be playing all five. Yeah, first time on the, uh, on the stream today. So Boris now three uh, three bullseyes away from taking us to a decided fifth leg. There's one and two and three. So very important here uh, for the cork. <coughs> so Dave is in the bull. About a middle of the road single. And that is good enough. So Dave will have the start. All four legs have went with the throw. Only going to start with a four mark. So, Boris been in this position plenty of times. It's going to go for the old shotgun method. So back and forth here, trading four and five marks. Here could be the turning point. And there it is, big nine mark there from Boris. Seven mark follow, so. Back nines for Boris in this deciding leg. Big, big shots again. Big seven mark there from Dave. Still trails by seven. Yeah, really needing, needing Boris to fall off here. Well, and Boris is going to play his ultra-aggressive strategy. And it may cost him opportunity for Dave. So we've seen a nine mark turn this leg on its head. And could see another nine mark do it again. Well, we 
went for the 19 on the third. Probably curtains. That is probably the end of this. Uh, huh? Oh, and Boris pumped about that double 16. Well, you know, it's a big, big shot. I mean, nine fifteens is the only, uh, I don't know, six, and then I take the 19 and hit four bulls when I come back. I would have went for the trip 19 with the last one. Down 22. Yeah, because Boris is probably going to put in another <coughs> 114. Well, 114 you can live with. It's the 133 you can't. Or the, that. And that's a great shot. So Dave now. You're going to need five bullseyes just to get the lead. But that's probably not going to be enough even if he does it. So Boris only needing one bullseye to really steal this match after being gifted a leg. What is he doing? Yeah, uh, job done for Boris there uh, with, with the last dart. So you're winner in this one, Boris Kirchmar, unfortunately for Dave, and you see him throwing up his hands back there. I, I still feel like he gave this match away with that with that mistake. Well, it, it's, I mean, 2-0. I mean, we, we've already he said it a million leg. times. Yeah. And he won the third leg. Well, he won Even the... Even going second. Yep. Like... Or no, he went first. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, because he lost. But still. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, you you can't. Obviously, we can't uh, guess how uh, how Boris would have reacted being down uh, two nil. But it certainly certainly changes the dynamic uh, a little bit. But cheers to Dave coming back after uh, after making the mistake. I mean, it's. That third leg was pretty impressive after the end of the second. Oh, yeah. I was I was very impressed with the way he was able to put it out of his mind so quickly and continue to fire on. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody. Uh, we're, while we've got some downtime here, why don't you download the new, new Bull Shooter Live app? You can find this on Apple iOS and Android phones. The new update has a new look and also adds a digital card that can allow for faster event registration. It's just scan, scan the code and your event registration slip and link your account. So head over to the App Store and whatever your, uh, your given platform is, except for you BlackBerry users. Who still got BlackBerry? I don't know. We're Dart players, Dad. We're, we, we live... We run our own. You run your own. We run our own. I mean, sometimes we we run all by ourselves. We're we're not. We don't conform. We're we're part of a niche sport. And we we sometimes we don't we don't we don't jump on the bandwagon. You got a booger hanging. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We'll be right back. All right, we've got our final, Mr. Boris Boris Kirchmar of Croatia, taking on Jeremiah Malar. The Canadian now living in Michigan. Dun, dun, dun. This is all cricket. Best three out of five. And it appears as though Jeremiah won the cork. So he will lead us out as loser starts. Now this should be a pretty quick match. As far as pace is concerned. Oh, my Sorry about that. Say that a lot. It's Jeremiah firing off with seven. Boris's head blocking the triple. <laughs> it's a large human. We need a bigger triple. Good last there from Malar. It's 
seen a couple of uh, peaks in the uh, Boris armor <coughs> in the few times that we've uh, we've seen him. Probably should have lost uh, to Dave Cameron. Definitely should have lost to Dave Cameron. First match against Rusty Jake, he smashed it. Yep. But against Dave Cameron, uh, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't feel like he gave that match away with that second leg shot. Boris looking at the 17 down. Those find a triple with the third. I always love when he looks annoyed that the other guy plays well. Boris? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's a constant shaking of the head because he hasn't played better, but it always comes across as like, how dare this guy throw triples against me? Yeah, it really, it really does. Going into 15. Only a single. Boris tossing it away. So, uh, first leg, uh, first leg give up from, uh, from Boris. Now one bullseye away. We may see him practice on the 20s. I don't know if he's going <coughs> to try to do anything after that last shot. Five bullseyes, but damage done. <laughs> Chat has just informed me that Jeremiah now has American citizenship as well. I did not know that. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the dual citizenship for for Jeremiah. I know he's playing on Team Canada this weekend. Only five for Boris. Jeremiah has to feel like that's a uh, an opening. Yep. Especially early doors on that 20. Yeah, put in seven or nine, get the lead, and then put Boris on his back foot for the leg. And he does find the seven, so opportunity already. Boris just doesn't look comfortable like he did earlier. Up top. Great nine mark from Jeremiah. Taking away those 20s and scoring 114 points. Boris needs seven eighteens just to take a two point lead. And he's looking down. Great third. Don't mind that in that spot. No, absolutely not. <clears throat> I mean, you're turning in that into a leg that you shouldn't win. Well, and you're dictating what your opponent throws at because Jeremiah is going to go at the seventeen now. But because he trips at first start, he can now take away your eighteen. And if your opponent's not going to miss, it's probably not going to matter. Oh, you see, see the. Uh the anger of the uh, third dart sliding into that too. <laughs> oh, Boris not finding the trouble. So, free shot at that 16. Can tee off. Yeah, with an X on it. If he trips at first dart, I'm guessing he'll go at the 15. Should stay there now. Up by 32. Yep. So that puts him up 48 exactly, which means that Boris has to throw 7 15 before he can get the point lead. He needs a triple. Only a single. 
So back to back legs. Worse in the low fives, which is just not going to do it in this triple, double A uh, Top Gun singles. Ooh. Oh, slack dart there. Rectifies it with the second. And into the bullseye. So a big, big shot here coming in on the bullseyes if uh, Forrest has any hope of uh, getting a, uh, a Dave Cameron reprieve here. Appears though Boris is looking to have someone buy him a drink. Jeremiah being the nice guy going up there and freezing the uh, the time clock. I don't think Boris realized what he was doing because he probably doesn't even realize there's a shot clock on the board, to be honest. At Boris's level, he has a he has a guy that puts his darts together for him. Oh, is he changing darts? I don't know if it was a tip or a oh. or a flight. I thought I fi I saw him fidgeting with money, but yeah, he may be uh, just changing a tip. Jeremiah gonna play runner for him as well. It's good to be Boris. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I certainly would be nice enough to freeze it, but I don't know that I would continue to walk up there and do it for the guy. <laughs> Boris going to put in five to take the lead. Big shot. So now... Jeremiah needs three bullseyes to win. Two bullseyes and 16. <laughs> <laughs> he only needs two darts. He only needs two darts. So is that two legs to Jeremiah? That is two legs to Jeremiah. So Boris will have a start in game three, but down two legs. He now has to hold and break. So again, a five mark start has to be looked at as an opening. Oh, and the poopy last start there. Oh, Boris, just throwing him away. Wow. So look at this. In a blink of an eye here, Jeremiah can win this final extremely quick with a with a continuation of the form he's had. And it's it blows my mind how the same player can go from averaging seven and a half a turn to three five. Well, advantage not really taken there. No, 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 no. That was like the absolute minimum that Jeremiah could come away with for it to be considered an advantage. And there, Boris, right back on the train. But because he opted to go at the 17s instead of the 18s, Jeremiah can now take the bigger number. I would actually rather be in Jeremiah's position here. Well, not now. Whoa, how did that get through? I have no idea. I was wondering why he didn't step to the side. He put it through those two. Well, he's throwing it at a different angle than I'm used to. <laughs> back to back. Yes. Back to back. <laughs> Boris, never out of it. We're, we're, we're talking about his demise. And he's thinking about the fourth leg. Finding a single on that last one. Here comes Boris. But 
Jeremiah knows that he's earned the right to start in the next one. Yep. After going up 2-0, that's the uh, that's the advantage in this uh, in this format. Maya puts in five, but only one bull needed to take it to the uh, fourth. Round. So here we go. Switching. Oh. Went back at the 20 with the last. I'm surprised to see that he switched after the first. Well, I think this is a taste of Boris's own medicine, honestly. I think he's trying to, uh, he was trying to play some type of a game there that, uh, that he's not used to. And, uh, if your strategy is to out Boris Boris, I got bad <laughs> news for you. <laughs> Taking away the 18. It was blocked. I love that shot. That was, that was a very good shot from Jeremiah. Most players wouldn't have had the gumption to switch away from the 19 there. Yep. See, and even if Boris would have hit the triple 19 there... Jeremiah likes his position to load up the 16. Yep, he gets a he gets an open shot at the only number that's yep. that's uh, or one of the last numbers yes. uh, still open. Now here, little pot committed on the 19, and he only puts in three. Yeah, little nervy darts there, I think. <clears throat> well, he didn't like the lie of the first one again. I, I I would almost rather like to see him switch off again. But, I mean, he still controls his own fate here with, uh, with six 15s. He'll get a look at the 16. Otherwise, we're going to a deciding leg. I would go with that 16. Absolutely. I would trip that 16. And if Boris hits the shot, we play game five. If not, I'm going to win it with four bulls. Oh, he stayed there. I'm surprised. I think I ought to force Boris to have to hit the shot. We'll see what Boris can do. I mean, average in seven. I mean, average to say it, it's it's going away. But now you don't get a shot. Well, you do get a yeah, shot. Yeah, you do get a shot. Boris plays stupid. Yep. Doesn't yep. go at the 16. We're just a single. Even if he hits a double bull there, Jeremiah can win the leg. If he throws a single 16, Jeremiah doesn't get a shot. But Jeremiah doesn't hit it. Instead, only put in three bulls. So Boris will win this leg three bulls. But yeah, the right shot on that last dart was the 16 all day long. You have to take away the three dart out there. And there it is. All tied up. Two legs apiece. Boris tells the board. How much he dislikes it. No, how much he cares for it. No, he threw his arms up in a very aggressive manner. He was not pleased with the board. It's like one or two holes in, maybe? Only one? Just barely in, yep. And off to the right, so not really in the way. That's a very important cord. And Boris will have the start. Making sure that Jeremiah knows that he uh, hit the uh, middle of the board exceptionally well. Sam Westgate from J and J Ventures going to come over and congratulate Boris on making Game Five. <laughs> 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 uh. Shot clock is running. Okay. No worries. Uh oh. The third. It could have been really bad. Yeah, that that was uh Still if you're Jeremiah, you love seeing that. Yeah, four mark, I mean 
If we were saying a five mark was an opening. Yeah, look at that. Oh, Jeremiah gives it to him. <laughs> oh, the facial expression. <clears throat> and, it, and Boris is rattled. Only three. So oh. Jeremiah now with an opportunity to really put a stranglehold on this match. One more triple will probably be enough. But he wants another. Oh, I threw that oh one he's too geeked he up. He was way. too geeked he, up. I think he knew one more triple was enough. <laughs> well, we've seen Boris crazy enough to uh, to win from this position. We really have. And nine marks is what will help you do that. Yep. It's not so much the shots he hits, it's the order he takes them. I would agree with that. Because even earlier, when he went single 19, triple 18, triple 20, if he would have went triple 20, triple 18, single 19 to start that leg, I wouldn't have said anything about it. Yep. Back to back. Oh, and he does a, like, it's about time. Uh, yeah. Like, what have you been doing this whole time? Oh, and it threw Jeremiah. A trip to 16. Absolutely. He went for it. Wow. What was that? I don't know. Was that a sarcastic celebration? I think that, uh, I mean, it couldn't have been, right? I mean, you, you get as good as you give. Yeah, I don't know. But Boris now needing a double bull. Oh, and he misses, but Jeremiah will have a chance for th uh, th the finish. Four bulls and a triple 16. He's going to take his time. Needs a double bull twice. Oh. Only a single. Still needs a double bull to take the lead. Finds it. Interesting. Yeah, that <laughs> makes it interesting. That makes Boris have to hit a perfect dart. Yep. He either needs a triple 16 to start or a double bowl to finish. There's the triple 16. So only two single bowls needed. There's one. There's two. <laughs> See the smile on Jeremiah's face. So your winner in the pro A double A Top Gun singles. Boris Kirchmar, unfortunately for Jeremiah Malari, finishes as your runner-up, taking home second place and a check for a thousand dollars. Boris, meanwhile, doubling that with two thousand. I think that's a breakdown. <laughs>